So you want to make friends with that stray cat, huh? That's awesome. We're going deep on those YouTube videos you sent uh, from Senior Cat Wellness, You a Pet, and Aquatech Info. Watching those kind of took me back to my own adventures in befriending the neighborhood cats over the years. Some worked out better than others. Every cat is their own cat, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, no doubt. But one thing that really struck me was how all those videos were on the same page about this. Getting a stray to trust you, it's like any relationship, no shortcuts. Right. It is interesting when you think about it. Easy to forget that to a cat. We're like these giant question marks, you know, liable to do anything. We're real. And speaking of earning trust, all three videos were all about food. Like, that's the secret sauce. And while Pet specifically calling out tuna, genius, what makes that so effective? Well, you know how much stronger a cat's sense of smell is than ours, right? Mm -hmm. So that tuna scent, forget about it. It's like irresistible to them. It's fulfilling a basic need. And they're connecting that good feeling with you, the one who's giving them that yummy meal. Okay, so I'm picturing this. I set out this gourmet tuna buffet. Instant best buds. Oh, if only it were that easy. <laughs> Senior Cat Wellness, they really made me stop and think. They said it could be weeks to really get a cat to trust you. Weeks. Weeks. Okay, now that's some straight talk right there. I'm getting antsy just hearing that, but I get it. It's not like we can just invite them in for tea and a chat, right? Exactly. And they also made a really good point about cats being, well, cats. Independent creatures, right? Mm -hmm. We're on their home turf. Got to play by our rules. Earning trust means we respect their space. Let them set the pace. Okay, so no rushing in. Got it. And speaking of space, let's talk body language. Senior Cat Wellness, they were all about moving slow, not making any sudden moves so we don't seem scary. But then Aqua Tech Info, they mentioned getting Los Amigos involved. Yeah, Los Amigos. Now, my Spanish is a little rusty, but I'm pretty sure that translates to friends. Are we talking about rolling up with the whole crew to try and win this cat over? That doesn't sound very low-key. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can see it now. No, no, don't worry. No need to start a conga line or anything. Los Go. Amigos. In this case, it's more about other cats, you know, the ones who the stray already hangs out with. Cats have their own social circles. Mm -hmm. Having a friendly face, or should I say a friendly whisker vouch for you, that can really help. Oh, okay. So less of a cat party, more like some feline diplomacy at play. I like it. But still, we're taking cues from the stray, right? Absolutely. Watch how they are around the other cats in the area first. See how they approach each other. Let that guide you. Got it. No sudden moves, no conga lines, just chill vibes. Let the cats do their thing. Sounds like a solid plan to me. That's the ticket. It all goes back to remembering each cat is different and their body language, it'll tell you a lot. That relaxed tail, those slow blinks, those are good signs. But if you see hissing, arched back, ears flat time to back up and give them some space. It's pretty amazing when you think about it, how much we can learn just from watching animals. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. Reminds me of something Senior Cat Wellness mentioned about like the different ways this whole befriending a stray thing can go. Like they talked about everything from just putting out some food and water to the cat actually starting to hang around regularly. It got me thinking, what's a realistic goal here? Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, right. Yeah. Picture this, me and this cat snuggled up on the couch one day. That'd be the dream. It's gotta be real too. So how do we even define success if it's not necessarily about turning a stray into a, you know, full-on house cat. I actually really like that question. It kind of shows what's so cool about these interactions. The, each one's its own thing, right? Success doesn't have to look the same for everyone. For some people, maybe it's about making life a little better for the cat, making sure they've got food, fresh water, maybe even a little shelter if things are rough. Yeah, just making their lives a little easier, a little less stressful. Exactly. And then there's those moments, you know, those little moments where you can tell there's some trust building. Like you mentioned a stray rubbing up against their leg. That is a huge deal for a cat. Or say the cat starts eating closer and closer to you. Little wins, maybe they don't seem like much, but in cat language, it's huge. I love that celebrating the small victories. Like it's not about making something happen. It's about appreciating every little bit of progress, you know, yeah. every step closer to that bond. It's like the journey's as important as the destination. Totally. And hey, who knows? Maybe that journey does lead to some couch cuddles down the line. Yeah. But even if it doesn't, the connection, the trust that's so rewarding for both of you. You know what? This whole deep dive, it's really got me thinking. If we're approaching a stray, and these are animals that are naturally, like, cautious, got to do things on their own terms, if we can be this patient, this understanding with them, how would that change how we are with all animals, even the ones we live with, our pets? Oh, that's a good one. It's like we're talking about a whole different level of empathy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
instead of just thinking about what we want, we're trying to see the world from their point of view. Totally. And you know, it makes me think about this friend of mine. They have this dog and he is terrified of new people. I wonder if I could use some of these same ideas, like letting him decide when to come closer, really paying attention to what he's saying with his body language. I wonder if that could help him feel a bit safer. 100%. Yeah. It's amazing what we can learn from these deep dives, right? And how we can take those lessons, use them in all kinds of relationships. I know, right? I'm already feeling closer to that stray just thinking about all this. It's like you were saying, celebrating those little wins, like, oh, a little ear twitch there. Or, or one of those slow blinks, man. Even a tail wag in my direction, I'd be thrilled. The best, right? Yeah. Those little signs, those are what tell you it's working. It makes you think. If we can approach a stray cat, and these guys, they're naturally, what's the word, cautious. If we can be this patient with them, this understanding, how different would our relationships with all animals be, even the ones we already know? Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is a big thought, isn't it? Like, are we talking about, like, next level empathy here or what? Right. Instead of coming at it from, like, the human point of view all the time. Yeah. What if we tried to see things their way? Love that. And it actually, it makes me think about my friend has this dog and he is like terrified of anyone new. I wonder if I could use some of these same ideas like letting him decide when to come closer, really watching his body language. Maybe that could help him feel less scared. Totally. That's the thing about these deep dives, right? They make you think in new ways. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see how you can use what you've learned in all parts of your life, not just with cats. You know. Totally. Totally. This has been Wow, eye-opening is an understatement. To our listener out there, hey, best of luck with your new furry friend. Remember, patience, understanding, and a little tune I never heard either, right?